Good morning and happy Sabbath. I am so excited that you are able to join us for Sabbath school. Man, I have missed seeing you here in the church. It is all decorated from, for Christmas, as I'm sure your home is too. But even though we can't be together in person, we can still do Sabbath school together every single week. So thank you again for joining our beginner and kindergarten Sabbath school. We've got some fantastic stories for you as well as a craft and some beautiful music. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end. But let's begin our Sabbath school with a special little Christmas prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving us so much that you wanted to come as a baby to live in our world, to save us from our world. So God, I pray that you will be with us today that you will be with each and every heart of each and every boy and each and every girl, of each and every mommy and daddy that is watching this Sabbath school. Bless us in your name. Amen. Now, let's enjoy Sabbath school. Good morning. Happy Sabbath! We're here with a Christmas story for you, told by Lana. See, Joseph and Mary, they've traveled a long way and they want to rest. They've come to an inn. I'm sorry, said the man. All my rooms are full. But we've come a long way and my wife is going to have a baby. Oh, well, I know. Maybe you could stay in the stable. It's warm in there and dry. I have some animals in there. Let me show you. See the animals? The donkey and the cow? See the manger? The hay in the manger is soft. It'll make a nice bed for the baby. The stable will be a good place to stay for a while. After a while, baby Jesus was born. Let's put our baby on the soft hay in the manger, says Joseph. You should rest a while. Mother Mary looks at her new baby boy. She touches his curly, dark hair and his tiny ears. She loves him so much. Come, said Joseph. Come and rest now. Go ahead. Some shepherds watch their sheep by a nearby hillside. They have heard that Jesus will come to earth. When will he come, they wonder. Will he come soon? God's word says he will. The shepherds see a bright and shining star. Where did that star come from, they wonder. Suddenly, an angel appears. Do not be afraid, says the angel. Bring... <laughs> I bring you good news. Jesus, the Savior, has been born. You will find him in the city. Look for a baby lying in a manger. Many more angels appear. So many angels praise God. We must go, say the shepherds. We must go to the city and look for this baby. Thank you, God, the shepherds pray. Thank you for sending your son to the earth. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our savior. We will tell everyone we meet about him. We can pray too. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Christmas. We may pray now. Amen. Remember our Bible verse, I love you, Lord. Let's say it together. I love you, Lord. Bye, boys and girls. Joy to the world.
I'm so glad you could join me again this Sabbath for another Bible story because the stories we're learning about now are my favorite in the Bible because it tells about God's special gift that He gave us. In fact, that's our memory verse today. Our memory verse says, Every perfect gift is from God. James 1.17 I want you to listen really carefully to the story and let's see if we can figure out what that perfect gift is. Do you remember last week in our lesson, we learned about Joseph and Mary and that Mary was very special and that God had chosen her to be the mother of his son. But you know what? Joseph and Mary lived in Nazareth and the clues that God had given us from the very beginning of the Bible said that his son would be born in Nazareth. So God had to have a way to get Joseph and Mary from Nazareth to Bethlehem. So you know what he did? He used the ruler Caesar Augustus and Caesar Augustus made a law that everybody had to go to the place where they were born to pay taxes and to count them so he knew how many people he was ruling over. So he had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem and it was about a hundred miles and it took them days to walk there because they couldn't go out and get a bus or get in their car or ride on an airplane. They had to walk. Can you imagine all the commotion in Bethlehem when they got there? There were merchants trying to sell spices and there were people trying to find people to stay in their motels and there were priests and rulers walking all over in all of this commotion. And in all of this, Joseph was trying to find a place where he and Mary could sleep. You know, we're told that he went to every place in Bethlehem and nobody had room for him except for the very, very last place. And he let them stay in the stable in their cave underneath their house. Can you see a picture of Joseph and Mary on their way? They look pretty tired, don't they? But when they got into the cave, something very wonderful happened. What happened? That's right, Mary had her baby and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and she lay him in the food dish. They were so excited, but nobody else knew that they were there. The merchants didn't know and the innkeeper didn't know and the priests and rulers didn't know, but God had somebody watching over them. In fact, God had had special angels watching over them the whole time all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem and all through the towns of Bethlehem. And now the angels had very quiet and reverently watched as their new baby king was born. And you know what? God told them, now you can finally go tell everybody that my son is born. And the angels were so excited. Do you know what the angels did? The angels went to where the merchants were. But you know what? The merchants were so busy counting their money from all the things they had sold, they weren't even looking for baby Jesus to be born. And the angels went to the innkeepers, and the innkeepers were busy trying to find food and places for everybody to sleep. And the priests and rulers were so busy, they weren't looking for baby Jesus either. You know, I think that must have made the angels very, very sad. But when they flew out over the hillsides of Bethlehem, do you know who they saw? They saw shepherds and the shepherds were taking care of their sheep. Can you see if there were lots and lots of shepherds there and there were lots of sheep all around them and they were all getting snuggled in for the night. But you know what? They were doing something else besides just watching their sheep. They were talking about all of the promises and the clues that God had given them that baby Jesus would be born soon. They says, do you remember? They said that he would be born in Bethlehem and the time is just about right. And does God keep his promises? Absolutely, if God promises something, we know that God always, always keeps his promises. And now the angels were so excited, they had found somebody that was looking for baby Jesus. And all of a sudden, there was a bright light in the sky and the shepherds covered their eyes and they were so afraid. But out of that bright light, they heard a beautiful voice. And you know what the first thing the angel told them? 
don't be afraid. He knew that they were afraid. He knew that they had never seen angels before. And he says, I have something wonderful to tell you. Tonight, baby Jesus was born in Bethlehem, not very far away, just like the Bible scrolls tell him. And he says, you know what? God's going to give you one more clue, too, to make sure that you find his special son you are going to find him laying in a manger in a food box for animals, and he is gonna be wrapped in swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes are lots and lots of strips of clothes that they wrap around and around and around somebody. And you know what? The angels could not wait a second longer. They had waited for hundreds and hundreds of years, and now they just couldn't wait. And suddenly the whole sky was filled with angels. Oh, now what do you think the shepherds thought? Do you think the shepherds were excited? I think they were really excited because now they had gotten used to the light of the angel and they knew that they didn't have to be afraid because God had sent the angels to tell them something special. And the angels were so excited, they started singing. And you know what they sang? They sang glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to all people. Isn't that a wonderful thing for them to sing? And they sang the song with all of their hearts because they were so happy. They loved Jesus so much and they were so glad that the shepherds loved him too. And you know what? As quickly as they showed up, they left and the sky was dark again. Oh, I would have loved to have been with the shepherds there and to hear, the, hear that wonderful song that the angels sang. Don't you think that would have been fun? Do you think you would have gotten up and run to try to find baby Jesus? I think I would have, but we're going to have to listen to our lesson next week to see what they do. You know what? Do you remember our memory verse? It's every perfect gift is from God. So do you remember where God sent a perfect gift in this story today? Yeah, it was in baby Jesus, wasn't it? And do you think, I think maybe the angels were a perfect gift too because the angels got to sing to the wise men and they got to tell them that baby Jesus was born. I am so glad you listened to my story with me today and I hope you are here next week when we learn more about our angels. So glad you joined me for our Bible story today. Do you remember we learned about the angels that came and told the shepherds that baby Jesus was going to be born? And the craft we're going to make today is an angel. Can you see it up here? Oh, this is going to be really easy and I think you're going to have fun doing it. We're going to take three skeins of embroidered floss like this and then we're going to take one of them and we're going to make four strings. Now these can be 10, 12 inches. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be exact. So we're just going to cut them off. Here's three. And here's the fourth one. And then you know what we're going to do with all the rest of these? We're going to find the center and we're going to lay them flat. Now when we do that, it's actually easier if we take it and we cut so it's like this. See, so we're just gonna lay them really flat like that. If you look really carefully, you can see the center right there. And we're just gonna open this one up and we're gonna cut it again, just like we did the first one. And we're gonna lay it out on top of that really, really carefully. Let's try to keep them all together, all the same length, because that's gonna make it a lot easier for us to make our angel. Now the third one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut it and we're going to open it. Whoops, I missed a string there. And we're going to open it up and we're going to lay it right on top of the others so they're all together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these strings and we're going to go right here to the middle and we're going to take this 
and fold it over top. And now we're going to tie a knot. Do you know how to tie a knot? Sort of like you tie a knot in your shoes. And we're going to tie a knot and we're going to pull it really, really tight. There you go. Now let's tie another knot to make sure it doesn't move. Now go to the very, very ends of that string and we're going to tie another little knot here. This is going to make the loop that we're going to be able to hang our angel from. And we're just going to make a knot right there at the end. There we go. Now we have it just about done. See, that's what it's going to look like. Now what we're going to do is take your fingers and sort of run them through it to make sure all the thread is tight. And then we're going to take another string and this time we're going to go down about an inch. It doesn't have to be exact. And we're going to take this string and we're going to tie another knot. And this knot is going to make the angel's head. So we're just going to tie another knot. Make sure it's pulled really, really tight. Then we're going to do something else. We're going to make his, his arms next. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some yarn off of each side. Can you see his head there? Now we have the loop and we have his head. And now we're going to start with his arms. So we're going to take just a little bit of yarn off of each one of his sides like this. There, does that start to look like arms to you? There you go. Now we're going to take these two and we're going to put them together right in the center. And then we're going to go down just a tiny little bit because his arms aren't going to be as long as his whole body. So we're going to go like this and we're going to tie another knot. Remember, when you do knots, tie them really tight because we don't want the knots to slip off of the angel wings or their arms. Okay, tie a knot really tight. Then we're going to have to make it look like arms. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to go like this and we're going to take just this much and we're going to cut it off just like this. So it's just a little bit longer than that knot. So it looks like his hands. What do you think? Does that look like his arms and hands now? Now we're going to put his arms up by his head and we're going to make his body. Now you go down a little bit farther, maybe an inch and a half this time, and we're going to make our angel's body. And you take your last piece of string and you go around and you know what you do? You tie another knot. And we're going to tie this so tight again because we don't want it to slip. Now our angel is just about done. There, what do you think? Does he look like an angel? He's starting to, don't you think? Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to go down and we're going to cut the bottom so it's all the same length. So just hold everything together and cut all of those edges off. There you go. Whoops, we still have a couple little long ones there. Now, what we're going to do is you might need a little bit of glue for this, but we're going to take the angel's wings and we're going to put glue here and we're going to fold the wing, the arms up. Can you see how I folded mine up? Now, in my craft box, I found some tiny, tiny little roses and I thought that might be nice to stick on them. And I found some silver butterflies and I thought they would make the perfect wings. So after you glue the arms up, you glue the wings on, or you don't have to have wings at all. It looks just as pretty without wings. What do you think? Is that beautiful? And there's a string on there so you could get them all tied and you can hang them from your Christmas tree. Oh, I like this because it reminds me that even though the angels were watching over the shepherds and they were watching over baby Jesus, do you know I have special angels that watch over me and protect me all the time too. Do you think that's a good thing to thank God for? By the way, do you think maybe that is one of the perfect gifts that God gave us? Remember our memory verse, every perfect gift is from God, James 1.17. So I want you to think about those memory verses as we do our angels this week, okay? I'm glad you joined me and we'll see you again soon.
you again for joining our Sabbath School. Now, I don't know if this is your first time joining us or if you and your family have been joining us absolutely every week, but I am glad that you've joined us here today. Now, as we are enjoying our Sabbath time together, I want us to think about some of the things we've gained and some of the things we've lost during this pandemic. We've gained the ability to do church and Sabbath school in our pajamas, and that's no small thing. But one thing that we have definitely lost is our community and this connection we feel when we sit next to somebody in church. Another thing that we have definitely lost is our ability to teach our kids about church in person. It makes it a little bit tricky. I mean, for instance, although I am thankful for online giving because our giving has actually remained the same this year, which is incredible. That means that all of you parents who are watching, you have been giving consistently, although there has not been a plate passed in front of you. One thing I don't like about online giving though is our kids don't see it. It makes it a little bit difficult to teach our children how to give their tithes and offerings because they don't see that week after week. They don't witness it happening. They don't anticipate that as a part of church, as a part of what it means to be a member. And so I encourage you, you would have gotten one of these in the mail or somebody dropped one off, if, especially if you're here in Berrien Springs. We gave this to each and every one of our families that attend Sabbath School here. And if you didn't get one, let me know. And I would be happy to find a way to get you one of these. But these are special tithe and offering envelopes designed for kids. Take this opportunity, make this a teaching moment where you can sit down with your kid and show them, hey, this this is how you fill this out. This is how you give back what is God's to him. And I want you to think about what is a gift you could give God this year to help continue these Sabbath schools as we move forward. Because honestly, when are we going to meet again in person? We're not entirely sure. But we do know that we still need to be giving to God week after week. And as we're thinking about Christmas, as we're thinking about what God has given to us, there's no better time for us to give to Him. Again, thank you for joining Sabbath School, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Sabbath. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you that we can have another time to spend time with you. Thank you that we can spend time with friends and family. Amen. Amen. Um.